Hello everybody and welcome back in today's video where I want to give you 10 wildlife photography tips that I learned during my wildlife photography journeys. With these tips you will be able to make the difference in the field or at least I hope so much. So are you ready? Okay let's go! Very well guys, glad being here with you in this new video about wildlife photography. Today I want to tell you my favorite secrets for taking better images in wildlife photography. These tips are more related to camera, so maybe I'm gonna make another video about other secrets always for getting better images, like for example in the field. But let's see my first 10 tips. Tip number one, check the camera settings. Okay, tell me how many times you forgot to change the camera setting from, from your last photography session. Many? Always? Never? Yes, in my case, sometimes. But every time I did, I missed some good pictures. Uh, just because I had to reset the camera. So, the most important aspect to check are Number one, batteries. It isn't good starting with run out of batteries. Two, exposition compensation. Yes, how many times did you get darker or brighter images and you didn't understand why? 3. White balance. Pretty annoying. Have you, yes, pretty annoying having strange cold cast in maybe sunny days. And number 4. Wrong shutter speed. Ok, be careful uh, because there are other settings to check. But Mm, your camera has a special option called the memory setting where you can uh, set in advance almost every settings uh, of your camera of course and then you can record them using the mode dial every camera has in the menu a specific option for doing that so study your camera menu to understand how to get it and set your favorite settings like ISO, shutter speed, white balance mode, focus area in order to be soon ready in your next photography trip. Tip number two, lower ISO value. You know, in wildlife photography it's easy to start at night and often to take pictures in low light conditions. So generally we tend to raise ISO value in order to get a decent, uh, a decent shutter speed. But during the day when the sun comes out you don't need to always have the same ISO value. So my advice is to decrease it once you get better light. Maybe step by step, just to be on the safe side and not to have a too lower shutter speed. But there's another option. I mean, using auto ISO, setting the minimum and the maximum value, like ISO 100 uh, as a minimum value and ISO 6400 as a maximum value. In this way, you won't care to change it continuously because it'll be the camera to do the hard work for you. Tip number 3. Shutter speed. This tip is related to the previous one and they work together. Uh, depending on the focal length, you have to use a proper shutter speed just to avoid a blurry picture. Uh, you know the rule, but generally we tend to double the focal length. So for instance, if I'm using a 600mm lens, so I'll have a shutter speed of 1200 of a second or more. But with the modern and higher res sensor, I prefer to triple that value, so I'll have 1800 of a second or more. But also in this case, there's a small trick for avoiding to check every time what shutter speed uses. Just use the minimum shutter speed setting related to the ISO value. So, for example, you can set an ISO auto minimum shutter speed to ensure to have at least that uh, shutter speed. The camera will increase the ISO value according to the previous setting. I mean, the tip number two. Tip number four, tripod. Yes, I know, sometimes can be tiring uh, carry on all the time a sturdy and a heavy tripod. But it's also true that there are many lightweight tripod in carbon fiber, so not really heavy, and that can improve your image quality. Having a tripod permits you to have a more stable camera, so forget to lie on a wall, or on a tree, or on a rock, or on, a, on the ground just to remain stable and not shaking your camera. With a tripod, you'll be sure to get a pin-sharp image in almost every condition. Uh, using a tripod is easy, but 
you have to be aware that rough grounds can be dodgy. So always check the ground and where you are putting the tripod's leg. Check the stability of the tripod itself before putting on the camera, mostly with, uh, with heavy prime lens, because if the tripod falls down with your expensive lens, so it'll be a serious problem. And don't forget to check every twist lock or safety lock of the legs, just to avoid the same bad aspect of fall down. Tip number five, remote control. Okay guys, I'll never be tired to say that a remote control is your best friend for having pin sharp images. Of course, it works better with a tripod, but only using a remote control, you'll be absolutely sure to not have blurry pictures. Yes, because you don't need to use the shutter button of the camera and the shutter delay either. With the remote control, it doesn't make any sense using them, just because you shoot without touching the camera. So no vibration will affect the, uh, the camera and the track, giving you the best image quality. Tip number six, shooting burst. Yes, it's one of my favorite tips, because despite everything we do, Cameras are not perfect and they might get in trouble. During many years of wildlife photography, I saw that using the shooting bars, I'm pretty sure to get at least one or two pictures perfectly in focus. And I also have the chance to get a better position of an animal, maybe when it's moving, but it works even with static subject in low light condition, where you got lower uh, shutter speed. In situations like that, it's easier to get at least one or two pictures in focus just because you use the shutting past. Tip number seven, pre-focus. Uh, despite model camera and lenses are really fast, there is no point to get your lens going forward and backward all the time when you are viewing a subject. So I prefer to pre-focus somewhere when I know I'll find my subject, maybe a rock, maybe a perch or anything else you know uh, your subject uh, will use or will go. In this way, the lens don't jump everywhere trying to focus, but it will be ready soon and you'll capture your subject. Tip number eight, tracking. With animal in motion, it's always hard to get a sharp image. But if you have quite time to lock on the animal before it goes somewhere, you'll win. Yes, generally when I'm pretty sure that the animal is about to go, I start to lock on, uh, to lock on it after pressing the shutter button of the remote control. That way, using the real-time uh, real tracking system, the camera will follow the animal when it moves, giving me the chance to get a beautiful moment and a sharp image. Tip number five, gimbal. A gimbal for me is vital. There's nothing better than using a gimbal. I made a review of my tripod and gimbal where I explain why it's better a gimbal instead of a ball head. Basically, once you have balanced the lens on the gimbal, you don't need to make anything else. Just move the lens, point the subject and shoot. Using always the remote control without worrying of anything. Your camera and lens will be always safe and in that position you can use one hand for moving the lens and the other hand for shooting with the remote control. It's easy, isn't it? Tip number 10. Diaphragm. Sometimes we are worried to use the lens at the widest aperture just because we spent a lot of money for our new prime lens and we want to use it at f4 or f2.8 just to have the best background but sometimes when you your subject is pretty close to you using the widest aperture of the diaphragm can get the camera in trouble if it can't focus properly the height of the animal or the head as well so i prefer to close a little bit the diaphragm just to be on the safe side for example if the maximum aperture of my lens is f4, I tend to use it at f5.6 or f6.3. That way, I'm sure to have a bigger depth of field and so to have more chance to get all the animal info, or at least the head with the, its eyes. Another thing to consider is that almost every lens reaches the better image quality in terms of sharpness at f8, giving you also a further bigger deep of field with the maximum image quality of the lens. Yes, I'm aware that the newest cameras are capable to focus and follow animal eyes, so it'll be easier to get a perfect picture. But it, it's also true that not every camera has that feature, so you need to find another solution. Okay folks, it's time to say goodbye. I hope you enjoy watching this video. Mostly I hope being useful 
for someone in case give me a like and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to load the notification bell just to not lose every my new video if you have a question please write them in the comment section below as well as any doubt or request okay so thanks again and see you in the next video bye bye